Hi, a very warm welcome to Trio Metrics um, webinar. This is a product showcase on Trio Express for NDC. I'm Jonathan Boffey. I'm the Business and Development Director here at Triometric, and I have with me one of my senior technical colleagues, Alex Beat. Um, today, so the, the idea today is, is really to give you an overview of, of the Trio Express for NDC product. Um, the mainstay of today, we'll actually be getting Alex to actually show you um, some of the reports and things that are, are, are possible with the system and give you really the idea that collecting NDC traffic and, and driving business intelligence from it is, is a really valuable thing to do. Um, first off, though, I'm just going to kind of take you through a little bit of background on how it works and why it does perhaps what it does. So, firstly, just a little bit of background. I mean, Trimetric has been working with uh, a lot of uh, enterprise customers for a very long time. So, people like Hotel Reds, GTA, uh, Fair Logics in, in, in the flight space. This Trio Express product is kind of the baby brother. It's a SaaS version with a slightly lighter weight feel, um, but it's entirely based around our, our very mature enterprise product. So it's cloud-based, it operates in the Amazon Web Services space. It still captures live traffic coming in out of your NDC booking platform. It processes that on a dedicated platform, so it isn't impacting your booking engine, and in particular, it's very different from something like logging, which typically slows down your system. And because it's relying on traffic, literally capturing live traffic as it goes by, um, it has to process everything in real time. And we talk about it doing things in near real time. Um, and that's just simply taking account of the fact that it takes time to process things and allow for timeouts and so on. So there's typically um, a five minute to 10 minute delay in something being, say, on the wire, on the network, and being on the screen in, in a report. Commercially, it's designed to be um, the lower cost entry system. It's, uh, there isn't a lot of upfront costs associated with this system. Um, it's kind of a pay-as-you-go type model, um, which makes it very cost effective. Traditionally, with our enterprise products, it's all about big data. This one's more about, let's call it large data, and we're trying to optimize what we process and what we store to minimize costs, and, but still provide uh, a very, very good value. Contracting for it is on an annual basis, uh, and the, the fees which are typically month, quoted as monthly fees, those are based around the actual traffic volumes that we analyze on your behalf. So a little bit about how it works. Um, there's kind of two parts to this. The first one is about getting the sort of data into the system. And the second is about kind of getting the information out of the system. So let's kind of start with collecting the data. As we said, it's already based on, on a network capture. So we provide a data collector which sits in the same location, typically, as your booking engine. If that happened to be cloud, we've got uh, a capability to do that, too. But let's assume it's a physical data center. We provide a server which sits there and basically collects the traffic coming in and out. It processes that traffic um, for, for certain key information, and then it transmits a compressed version, a secure version of it, um, up to our analytical engine running in the cloud. From there, it's processed in terms of the XML content. So we've got a set of NDC rules that makes this product specific for NDC. And that allows us to extract information from NDC-based XML documents flowing in the requests and the responses, uh, and putting that into a database, um, and then obviously managing that, that storage. In terms of getting information out, so this is kind of the, the other side of the coin over here. You can securely connect from a browser into the system running on, on, on Amazon, um, and that allows you to get a lot of interactive reporting from the system. You can kind of do sort of what I call train of thought analysis. You can explore things. You can pick up blips on charts and, and kind of drill down through looking for particular root causes or, or additional information and support to help take actions. It happily has uh, an alerting concept. So let's take an example. Um, maybe I want to be having an email sent to me if bookings from a particularly important client drop off um, by, by, say, a certain percentage amount. Um, the system, because it's doing things in real time, can readily generate your report fairly quickly. Um, and then you're going to know about that, and you're going to be able to address that issue rather than finding out about it hours or even days later. The system also provides uh, what we call automated or published reports. Um, so this is where you devise a report and you publish it, and it sits there, and the system simply maintains that report. Um, and every end of every minute or every hour, uh, it, it calculates all the values you need to, to, look, to look at and populate that report. So when you come to look at it, it makes a very fast reporting. It's fantastic for us. Uh, we run the dashboards off it, and you see that underpinning some of the stuff that Alex indeed is going to show you. And the last thing really here is also the ability to schedule reports. So you can kind of set up a group of users. You can attach them um, to a, a particular delivery of a particular report. Um, and maybe it's some, you know, maybe it's your booking teams or something like that, or, or your contracting teams, um, or some distribution management team. 
they want particular reports for them delivered, say, 8 o'clock in the morning into their in-tray. So they wouldn't even need to log on to the system. So it makes it pretty simple for them. This is kind of what it's all about. This is the, the, the very quick and very short deep dive into, into what XML kind of looks like. Um, this is a very shortened example of what a typical NDC search request might look like. Um, as you can see, it's, it's very human readable. Um, it's full of tags which kind of mark up the different sections of the data. And it's just a mechanism for passing around structured data. Now, what we're interested in all of this is the information here in red. So we're interested in what the, obviously the request is for. In this case, it's a search. What we're interested in is obviously the search details. So we're really just trying to pull out these pieces of information in red, which is kind of who wants to travel, where do they want to go, when do they want to go, and are there any other you know sort of product things that we're particularly interested in in tracking uh, along with this? But these are these are the KPIs, and this is what we're kind of pulling out of the XML and we're collecting on your behalf to to provide the sort of key information which is going to help you run the business. So we build up um, uh, a very significant data set. And the question is, how do, I, how do I use that within the business? Now, I'm going to talk about two things here. We have, and I mentioned this right at the beginning, we have obviously our enterprise product, and we have this express product, which we're particularly focused on today. So I have four pillars that I generally talk about, and I'm going to come on to that in a second. For the, end, for the express product, um, we tend to focus on the first two, although we can kind of touch on certain areas uh, with, the, with the other pillars. Um, firstly, it's about getting quality of service. So this is pillar one. This is the IT distribution management challenge, getting the, the right quality of service so you understand uh, what sort of response times are there, how long it's taking customers to get information from you. Are there any errors? Are there timeouts? Are there cutoffs? Um, any of those things that kind of per, per really form these technical roadblocks that, that stop you kind of succeeding, if you like, at a very basic level. So getting all that information together, making sure the system is running correctly is an absolute must. Um, the second level is I've got the system running. I've got, you know, really the ability to exchange uh, information with, with all of my clients and it's very, very successful. The question is when I get searches for particular products, so this will be particular routes and check-in times, um, what am I able to offer back? You know, what does my inventory look like? Are, am I getting search of particular routes that I don't have uh, information for? Um, do I have these availability or no availability gaps within my with my database? Um, what's the reason for those uh, those those challenges? Um, it could be as simple as you run out of capacity. It could be pricing issues. It could be some form of um, product fair uh, bucket type enabling issues. There's all sorts of things going on here. You know, it's anything that gets between you and making a good offer. To your customer. So I said there are kind of four pillars, and this is the rest of it, and this is particularly relevant to, to kind of expanding up. Imagine this is a, a sort of a process of increasing sophistication. So you may start with one and two, which is you know a fantastic way to, to kind of get uh, your NDC monitoring and business intelligence running. But as you kind of build up that success, if you like, you want to probably extend and grow into potentially our enterprise products, or indeed maybe we can stretch the express product to also handle some of these things. But there's the financial information, so pillar three. It's all about you know what are, what are the offers that we're making um, inside of our, our search responses. You know what, what do we send back? So it's all this detailed search response processing, which we're now kind of starting to get into in, in the more enterprise side of things. Um, you know, and that gives me a great handle on how I'm kind of responding to what's been asked for. I can marry that up with the look to book ratios. I can see what's converting. And what isn't. Um, when it comes to obviously bookings and things like that, I'm starting to look at revenues. I'm looking at um, the sort of value that particular channels might be delivering, what sort of um, price they can bring for particular routes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I can start to do all of that type of analysis. And then lastly, the, the first, fourth pillar here is, is really about, um, it's a very wide, wide sector of, of kind of understanding what's happening out there in terms of trends in the market and, and so on. The piece I'd like to sort of focus and talk about in particular is, is are we sending back to the customer the right offers? Is it relevant uh, to what they're looking for? And it becomes possible that you know you can look at the search parameters. So you know when are they traveling? Are they staying a Saturday night? Um, are they leaving midweek? Is it a short trip and so on? By looking at a lot of those parameters, you can start to make very educated guesses about what the intent for travel is, and that's going to greatly influence perhaps what you want to send them back through your merchandising engine. You know what rules you would have embedded into that. And of course, when you develop these sorts of rules that do differential offers, you also want to track the uptake of those. And again, that's when analytics cuts back in and really gives you that very, very key picture. So hopefully that's kind of a, a good, good overview of what's going on. Um, I'd like to hand over to Alex 
if you would uh, like to see a little bit of um, some of the, the reports and, and the dashboards and so on that uh, we'd be very happy to share with you. Okay, I'm just, okay, I'm just control taking control of the screen. the screen. There we go. And hopefully now you should be able to see a performance distribution chart. I'm going to uh, show this and other charts which represent uh, some of the reporting uh, that the, the Trio Express uh, offer can, can give you. This first one is quite a simple uh, histogram showing the number of requests uh, by response time buckets, with each bucket being one second in time. It provides us with a very clear view of the spread of response times that our, uh, that our system is providing to our clients. Whilst there is uh, one or arguably two peaks here at, here at the beginning um, at the, with the first two buckets, but you can also see a very long tail of uh, slower response times with, with uh, responses as slow as 122 seconds. The reality is that, that nowadays, the, the world is impatient and anything longer than maybe three seconds is, is actually effectively too long for, um, for, for, for search processing. And this, of course, gets more critical the further down the line you are, you know, whether you are an, an, an OTA wholesaler or, or, the, or the hotel chain, then the further down the line you are, effectively the quicker that you should be in order to fulfill uh, the request to the end user. This, uh, I suppose that the next stage, which I shall show you in the next report of this investigation, you can see what your response time distributions are, but you've got to ascertain where where the problems lie. And uh, the next report, which is a dashboard called, oh, there we go, let's go to dashboards and performance overview, gives you just that. So this dashboard uh, is effectively showing you the, the response times and the number of requests by various dimensions. And this makes it quite clear as to where problems may lie. Uh, the top left is uh, is the uh, the response times by uh, by route, by origin destination. You can see that not all routes are equal, with their response times significantly differing. This obviously does depend on the number of options you're giving back to your customers and uh, the customers themselves. You know, so in terms of uh, you know, how far away from you they are, they are and how many, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the kind of routes that they're actually trying to search for. Performance by uh, price points or client. It, of course, uh, again, the way that they, the, the way that they, as in the clients, actually uh, actually search. It could be that they uh, search just for one particular flight or one particular route, whereas others will actually search from city to city or even from country to country if you allow it. The third on the bottom left here, performance by hour. This is quite interesting. It's actually just showing you that the, that the performance is actually changing with the number of requests that come in. And this would typically indicate that this system may be, uh, may be under stress if the if response times are significantly changing with, uh, with the number of requests that come in. And the fourth one at the bottom here uh, is showing the response time by, by type, you know, so does a, does a search, is a search slower than a, than a ticket and, and, uh, and so on. I'd like to give you an example of what we can do with our dashboards, and that is we can actually open the reports to, to be able to drill down. So if we want to find out, for example, we've got a situation here where we've got you know, Copenhagen to Moscow, response time is 16 and a half seconds, uh, and we're just going to drill down, I can find out which customers are actually searching for them, and then look at the profile of the customers that, 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 are, that are searching them, searching for this particular route, you know, the, the performance which, we're, which they're, they're achieving and the number of requests that they have. So we can easily see where, where the problems lie, you know, which, which customers and what the problems actually are. Moving on to another example of performance, and that is measuring timeouts. Nearly all of our customers have a report similar to this, 
which actually shows uh, the, the, uh, the, the number of timeouts and the timeout time, again, by, by customer. The way that we monitor allows us to have, a, a, in fact, a very low level view of the data. And we can tell when, uh, when a customer sends a request and they actually stop the connection, usually because it's uh, usually taking too long you know, for them. So we can actually tell you that, that the time that they're waiting before they actually time out and the number of requests. And this kind of report is typically used uh, as an alert so that uh, if a customer has unusual characteristics, uh, i.e. they've got a lot more timeouts or uh, you know, problems are arising and your system's going slower, then we can identify them and alert you as soon as they occur. So the timeouts give you an example of one kind of error. This is a, a low-level TCP level error, which, which we can detect. But I would say that, again, for most of our customers, the majority of errors are actually application level errors. And uh, these are the errors that are actually uh, returned in an XML uh, response you know, back, you know, back to a customer, the ones that you actually return. This rather interesting uh, dashboard here shows the application errors by, by price point again. So you know, which customers are, are, are affected the most by, by errors. Um, we can look at the, the actual errors that, that are returned and so find out, find the errors which are particularly bad for you. Uh, you know, so uh, obviously not errors are, are the same as well. When it's a warning, for example, uh, uh, then, uh, then it may not be so bad as one which is a, a, a critical error, which is stopping your, uh, your complete system from working. We're showing again the errors by by origin destination. If if there's been, I suppose, a misconfiguration in the database, then then you can have a situation where errors are occurring primarily on on one particular route, for example. And of course, looking at the trends of errors, in this case by hour. Now here you can see a spike or what looks like an unexpected spike. So what I can do is drill down into that and find out exactly what's going on. So there we go, at uh, 10 o'clock, drill down into it. Because this is errors, I can actually drill into the error code in order to find out which errors were being returned. And what I can see here, we have a few small level errors, such as PNR being ignored and, uh, and seating error, specific seat requested not available. But you can also see that the large majority of them were actually for an itinerary pricing error which is typically an error you know, which may be caused by, by our, our pricing engine or, or the pricing engine, should I say. And, uh, and so this report would be immediately sent off to the relevant personnel. In fact, typically it, before it reaches a, a high number, as, as soon as the errors start going up, you, send a, you get the system to send a report and it gets dealt with as soon as it possibly can. And I suppose that's the main reason for an analytics tool in the first place, to deal with things as soon as they, they possibly occur and hopefully stop them to, from occurring at all or in the future. <laughs> um, so th this, is, uh, this is looking at a broad spectrum of errors, but many customers want to look at and analyze and be alerted on other levels of errors, such as those that pertain to bookings. So, you know, understanding errors at any level and having a mechanism to alert and take action is really key to the, to the success of any business. And this, this particular report shows errors that are, have occurred whilst customers are, are trying to create PNRs. And again, it's the type of report that would actually be used to, to alert. You know, anything that's actually stopping you from getting revenue is, is the... Uh, in it is bad, of course, and this type of report will help you in your cause. I'm going to move on to Jonathan's second pillar in his uh, in his diagram, and that is availability. I'm going to open up the availability dashboard, and again, this is another uh, four diagram dashboard showing uh, availability by uh, by route, by price point, trends over time. And also another report called supply to demand, which I'll show you very shortly. Now, if I open origin to destination, there we go. Now, 
the way that we classify availability in this particular report is effectively uh, the number of, or showing the number of requests which return at least one one product, one route in this particular case, uh, as uh, in, in in the response. So here we have the blue ones, which actually have one or more uh, offerings, and we have the red, which show no availability, and the re report is ordered by the routes which have the least availability. What I shall do is again drill down, and the, the typical sort of first first step for this type of analysis is again to drill down on error. You know, most of uh, most of the NDC uh, responses that we see uh, that have problems, I know availability, typically have an associated error code, and that can be you know normally caused by lots of different things. It can be the errors uh, caused by customers sending incorrect or non-valid requests. It can be true no availability where you uh, they've asked for something which you normally have but you just haven't got in stock or you've sold out of seat should i say and uh, finally in this example where we've got this itinerary pricing error where the system has uh, has actually caused uh, uh, has actually caused the error so we've got some sort of typical bug in in the system so i'll return to the dashboard and show you now, as I said, the supply to demand. This is very much, very much goes hand in hand with uh, with availability. And it's, uh, I suppose, as Jonathan was saying, it's the it, it, it's actually information that we get from from the uh, uh, from the, the basic pre-processing uh, of uh, of the responses that, that we see. So we only take a small amount of information in this uh, Trio Express. Uh, offering uh, in order to make it as light and quick as possible. In this particular case, I'm sorry for going a little bit technical here, but uh, within a, a search response uh, for a search, there is a fair group element, and uh, this actually describes the routes which are uh, which are actually offered, and the number of fair groups uh, basically tells us how many offerings that you've uh, that you've given. So by looking at the average number of fair groups uh, supplied by uh, by route by origin destination, we're able to uh, to give a, an understanding of the choice that you're actually giving to your customers. Now, if you only have one offering and uh, and other other people have uh, multiple, maybe at different times or uh, going to slightly different uh, airports in the in the same cities or countries they're searching for, then it may mean that you might lose out to other customers. And it's this understanding that this uh, report can actually start out with helping you with. You can immediately see where you've got a, a low choice for your customers. But of course, not, not only could this actually be a situation where you haven't got the, uh, the, the, the actual routes to offer, but it can also be a capacity issue where all of the other uh, routes that you do have for this are effectively sold out. But of course, it can also be an error on the system, perhaps where somebody hasn't uh, uh, entered the correct information in the database, which may lead to the products not being returned in responses. You know, so it could, this type of report can be used to confirm that you are actually returning what you should be returning. The last report that I would like to show you is an example of, in fact, Jonathan's fourth pillar, and that is market segment look ahead. So this is typically a uh, the kind of report you'd see in your your enterprise system, but uh, or an enterprise system, should I say? But because it has uh, fields which are only taken from from the request in this particular case, then it means that it is possible uh, in in the Trio Express product. This particular example, we are looking at customer behaviour, and the first thing that we're doing is segmenting the the requests as they come in. So we're looking at the number of adults and children and infants in order to be able to tell whether it's a, a single, two people, family group, etc. And then we're looking at the day of the week of, of departure, the duration, the Saturday night stays, and of course the party in order to, to give a, a high level overview to, 
to determine whether or not that business or leisure. Once we have a segmentation, we're then able to use that segment in order to uh, analyze what that segment does, i.e. how many searches do, do they actually you know, perform on us or which segment is, uh, is actually to suit the, the products which we sell. And then what we've done is we've actually provided uh, stats on the average look ahead. And that is the, uh, the difference in time between the, the day they're looking or searching to the day that they wish to fly. We can also do this kind of analysis for, uh, for bookings to get a, a book ahead. And that would be the time obviously between the, the, the time that uh, they actually want to place the booking and the, and the time they actually wish to book. And it could be that this you know, planning period, you know, the, the time between the actual look ahead and the book ahead times could actually be the, the magical time in order to make that winning package or, or price offer in order to get the, uh, the most profit and the highest probability of you getting a sale. Okay, uh, that's, that's uh, a, a whirlwind view of, view of, or overview of uh, some reports for the uh, Triometric Express. And now I'll hand it back to Jonathan. Okay, thank you, Alex. So that was uh, very interesting, very useful. I'm just going to swap my screen back and hopefully it's all coming back. Um, going to open up for, for questions. There is a, a little panel where you can type some questions in if you've got some, some particular things you want to, to, to ask us. There are a couple here already, which I'm just going to kind of read out and all anonymously. Firstly, can you tell me more about the data collector? Well, I guess that's a device that's going to sit uh, typically within your environment, so it's it's probably worth just mentioning a little bit about it. It's there to collect the network traffic, so it's it's typically hooked up to the network switch to get a copy of traffic sent to it using a technology called port mirroring. That would be the traditional approach. The device itself is physically a small server. Typically, for the techies there, it's a 1U high server, which means it's not very big uh, and it fits comfortably in, in any standard rack. So that gets configured, which built here, it's an appliance effectively that we supply as, as, as part of the service. Okay, so hopefully that answers that. The second question I have here is, um, what if I don't want to put the data up into the cloud? Can you offer something similar? I guess the, the obvious answer is we have the enterprise system. So yes, we can do it that way. If you're really just looking for kind of the exact the same thing as the express products, so the lightweight processing and just perhaps the, the first two pillars, then we can we can produce a version of that which uh, can run entirely within your environment, so the data would never leave uh, your system, uh, and that's 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 equally possible. Okay, so uh, we call that uh, the enterprise um, edition. It's a distribution edition of the enterprise product. So. We can get into those if you want to contact us. Um, there's a lot more, more to talk about, I'm sure, um, but hopefully that's given you a, at least an introduction to, to our, our, our technology and give you a sort of a feel for the sorts of things that are possible with it. So I look forward to hearing from you, and um, I thank you for taking the time to be with us today and, and look forward to hearing from you in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.